In today's video, we're talking about product photography. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about product photography and specifically product photography that is on a white background. So this is something that you would use on uh, something like eBay or Amazon or your e-commerce uh, website. It's not high-end photography, it's just photography that looks clean and just focuses on a product and that typically that's done using uh, a white background. Now, there's a number of different ways that you can do this. The method that I'm gonna show you today is really the most efficient uh, way that I know how to do this because it just means that you try to do everything in camera uh, rather than have to go in and do cutouts. Now you can still do that if you wanna take it up another notch, but uh, I think that we're gonna get a result today that uh, we'll be able to go into Lightroom, uh, clean up a, a couple of little things, automate the process, and then we can, uh, we can set it up more of a batch process so that all you need to do is just keep uh, replacing the product, taking the photograph, and then you can batch process them uh, in something like Lightroom, which is the one, uh, the application that I'm going to uh, show you today. And just before we go on, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I put videos like this up every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So let me tell you about the setup. I'm using uh, old stuff and cheap stuff as much as I can to make this setup as affordable as possible while still getting a really good result. So uh, you can substitute this for more expensive and um, um, you know better equipment, more high-end equipment if you want to, but just know that you don't have to. And what I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna give you all the models of the stuff that, that um, all the equipment that I'm using and you'll see some of the some of the lights, for example, you pro you could probably pick them up for about fifty bucks each, um, and uh, so you really don't need that much stuff to get started. Although you will need a few bits and pieces, but I've tried to make it as affordable as possible. So let's go and have a look at the setup and uh, see what we got. Okay, so here's the setup. Uh, apologies, I'm doing this on my phone, so I don't disturb the camera. Uh, I've got two uh, speed lights and they are pointed straight at the background. You have to light the background, otherwise it will not come out white. So even though the paper is white, uh, the um, you'll find that it comes out gray unless you light it. Uh, it doesn't do anything to the product. As you can see, the product is uh, on the same plane as the lights. So the lights are illuminating only behind the product. Uh, this is my product, by the way. I've got my Wacom um, uh, tablet pen. And then for the product itself, what I've got is I've got an umbrella here, uh, and then I've got a, 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 another speed light in here shooting into the umbrella. Now, a lot of the times, uh, well, what you normally do is the, uh, the speed light is actually mounted at the top of that uh, umbrella uh, adapter. But uh, the problem with that is that when you do that, it doesn't actually fire the flash directly into the center of the umbrella. And, uh, and I need it to sort of be a little bit lower, in fact, uh, than the center. And so uh, this way, if I put it on its own dedicated light stand, I'm able to uh, direct this light exactly where I need it so that uh, it wraps around on the product. I've got this pretty close to the product, the umbrella. Okay, so it's gonna be a nice even spread of light. And then what I have is uh, on the camera, uh, just shooting in manual, of course, you have to shoot in manual um, when you're using flash. And uh, these are my settings. You can see them in there, okay? Um, I've got one trigger in there and then the other trigger uh, on this flash here. The other two, uh, the, the background lights, they have optical slaves uh, switched on, which means when they see a flash, they will fire. So I've got this set up. I've already done the calculations for the background. I've, I've tested the, 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 the background. It is coming out white or, or pretty close to white. So now it's just a matter of doing a, a, a test shot and uh, I'll make sure that the trigger is switched on. And when I do, this is what I get. You, you see that uh, the, it, it is blinking. Um, what that means is that it's pure white and uh, that is good for what we want to do because we don't want it to be uh, too white uh, because um, what that means is that you, we could be getting flare directed back from the background uh, onto the actual product itself. And that's the last thing I'll sort of mention is that you need to leave uh, a fairly a good amount of space between the product itself and the background so that you don't have too much light bouncing from the background onto the product, uh, onto the product itself. 
So that's uh, that. That's something to just be mindful of. If you're getting a little a little bit of lens flare, uh, you just need to make sure that you you back up uh, back off the, the the background lights. So uh, let's take this image into Lightroom and uh, we'll get working on it. And by the way, I will include this image as well uh, in the in a link to inside the description. So if you want to download the the raw file, uh, you'll be able to do that too. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom and we've got our image uh, and it's a pretty good starting point um, uh, from here. Really, we've got a lot of contrast. We've got a, a background that is almost white, even though it's got some banding in there. But um, as you can see, the, um, there's there's a, a sort of white band going across in the background here and then it goes a little bit darker. It's almost like a little bit of a blue tint there. So we're going to fix all this stuff first. Um, and before we get to the product, we're going to fix the background and then we get onto the product itself. Now, in order to uh, determine whether something is uh, pure white, uh, what you're looking for is that when you are in the develop module uh, and you hover your mouse all over the screen, you're going to see on the top right hand corner there, there are some, uh, red, green and blue indicators that are going to show you the value of the background. Now, in, in pure white is 100%. I don't really want to get all the way to 100%. I'm, I'm, I want to be somewhere in the 99% uh, area. If I'm in there, it's going to look good enough for e-commerce. Um, so what I need to do is, uh, the first thing that I do is I turn on my clipping indicator, which is this tool over here. Uh, as you can see, when you click on it, you get a little square on it. And what that means is that, uh, as soon as I start clipping something, that is when something's pure white, it's going to turn red so that uh, so that it's easy for me to be able to see it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've turned the uh, the indicator there on. I'm going to start raising the exposure until I see these uh, red blobs. OK, this is exactly what I'm after. Now, I'm going to raise this up to a certain point. OK, I'm going to go about there. OK, um, and um, and if I turn off the indicator, you'll see uh, that the background is now almost white, but it's not pure white. If I hover over the top, it, it, it's white there, 99.7, as you can see, 99.8. Um, but then in some cases, it's going to go to, that's 99.6. So it's pretty close, but it's not quite there. So we're going to finish this off uh, manually. Uh, we're going to turn our indicator back on again, and we're going to use an adjustment brush uh, set to uh, exposure which we're going to crank uh, right up. And uh, we've got a fairly large flow, 85 in this case. And I've got the auto mask um, uh, switched on to, uh, to help me keep everything tidy. So what I'm going to do now with this, uh, with this brush is I am going to paint all over these white areas, which are not, you know, uh, white um, and in order to turn them white. So uh, I'm just going to paint that along. Now, when I get to the product itself, you're going to notice there's a little bit almost of a shadow. I just go around this just lightly. Um, I think a shadow actually is quite a good thing to keep in there. It's going to be very, very faint. You're almost not going to be able to see it, uh, but it is going to add something uh, to the product. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, I'm now going to turn off the, um, the clipping indicator and I'm going to click down down here. And the background for me is now white. Uh, it's white enough. Um, in some, in most cases, it's 100%, but it doesn't really fall below 99.6, 99. Yeah, so that's that's pretty white. Um, so now it's time to work on the product. And for the product, it's easy because uh, I just use all the sliders except for the highlight and the whites because uh, that's uh, that's pretty much for the background. Everything else is just going to affect really the product. So in this case, I'm going to use the black slider. I'm going to slide that to the left. Okay, and that's going to bring uh, a lot of definition back into, into the actual product. Now I'm losing a little bit in there. So yeah, I'm going to create another adjustment brush and I'm going to use the shadows, uh, which I will bring up just a little bit in here. So I'm just going to do some localized um, painting in there, uh, which I will then fine tune uh, just a little bit in there. Okay. Now the other thing that's wrong with this image is that it's got the right, the wrong uh, white balance. Um, the the pen looks sort of bluish, which it isn't. It's black. Um, so I'm going to change the um, 
the white balance to flash, which is what I used to light it, and you'll see that it goes black, and now it looks black. Uh, now, obviously, there's a lot of dust and scratches on this product, which is, um, you know, if you were shooting a natural product, you would clean all this stuff up first so that you don't spend time um, doing uh, healing, working with a healing brush afterwards. Um, but that is, that's pretty much done there. Um, I think that uh, the only thing that you would do then is potentially uh, work at um, maybe just straighten, straightening out the image just a little bit. Uh, you would also apply the lens calibration uh, tools in there as well. And then it's just a matter of cropping uh, this to uh, fit your website. Um, but apart from that, we are pretty much done on shooting a product uh, on a white background for e-commerce. So as you can see, it's really not that expensive to be able to produce images such as these. Um, you can do it with minimal equipment. The biggest investment really is just in the time because you are going to have to fiddle around and experiment uh, to make sure that you get the desired outcomes out of your images. Um, now, if you do have any questions or you need me to elaborate on anything else, make sure you leave, the, the, you leave your comments in the comment section below and your questions in there as well. I'd be happy to get back to you. And again, just to remind you to please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And also make sure that you visit ministryofphoto.com. That's where you're going to find links to all of my videos, as well as blog articles and resources that you can get for free. And that's all I've got for you on this video. If you did like the video, please make sure that you give it a like. That's the little thumbs up uh, icon down the bottom there. Make sure that you click that. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.